segue because we already kind of started it from the first one and we'll segue into the idea of SDC and MDC because we already talked about hunting in the uh, in the wilderness survival video which by the way if folks if you want to put comments on that video or this one of how we could talk about more things related to this by all means do so or if you want to tell us how you do things that might be different than what was mentioned here by all means get help help provide more food for thought for folks who watch these videos out there and read the comment section but uh one of the things, and it could absolutely be a, a misrepresentation, and that means I fell for it as well. In my experience of reading and playing Rifts, when I read the main book, whether it's Rifts Ultimate Edition or the original main book, it sounds like most of the world is slums, most of the world is, I wouldn't call it weak, but it's SDC, let's just use the terms, SDC, and then you got some powerful MDC things out there. It could be you as a player character, it could be the Coalition, it could be some Mechanoids, it could be some Splugorthic, whatever, right? And it kind of makes implies that those things are few and far between. So when they come, oh, crap, the world is ending. And I love that concept. But when you sit down and play, at least in most of the conversations I've had with people or the games that I've played, he and I can tell me his experiences. Everything's MDC. And then it gets into this comment. And this one happens all the time. And I'm not trying to change this here, but just to put it in people's mind. I'm a Borg. What's this little dumb little town going to do to me? I'll just come over and kick over all your houses. Well, yeah, you want to be a murder hobo, you can be a murder hobo, especially as a full conversion cyborg. You know, yeah, the, the, the village doesn't want to let you in be, because obviously you are a walking, talking weapon that can that can ruin all of their wives and children. And you don't like that? You can just murder the entire town. Yeah, man, you can. But you're going to have some cyber knights coming after you after a while. You're, you're, you're going to have a bounty on your head after a minute. And beyond that, uh, that what everything you've said, in my opinion, and and uh, Kevin and Sean can uh, can you know agree or 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 be wrong with me, but uh, uh, in, in in my opinion, the whole uh, MDC is everywhere is a game master problem. That is, you are not representing the world correctly, and the the villages and towns you come across when you are apparently not doing your overland travel but when you're doing your overland travel you come across villages and towns and you can't bring in your apcs your glitter boy armor your samus your all that stuff they're going to want you to keep that outside the only way you're going to defend yourself in this town is is sdc weapons that's it that's the only thing you can bring in and sometimes not even that but usually you know knives and 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 handguns and stuff like that that are SDC stuff you can bring into town with you because it's not a clear and present danger to the entire town itself. And so if you don't have that, you're going in unarmed. You know, you you have to take off your armor because they me don't from want taking my gun in there. I dare you. They just say then you can't come in. I'm then and I'm go gonna away. walk right through and I'm gonna walk right through the front gate. What are they and gonna do to me? Then it comes into the problems of now you've got a wanted poster about you everywhere in the region, and you know, <laughs> uh, all, all the cyber knights but, gonna come that's after the you. Dichotomy. Because what I'm bringing up there is the dichotomy. Yeah. We've run into yeah. those players that do GM that. issue. It is a GM one important thing that Kevin points out, and I think this is really important, is every single community has at least one, if not more defenders or champions or yeah. overlords right so there's someone that is protecting them from the big bad wild world out there oh. like to some varying degree of success right because a lot of these towns disappear too yeah or, or that term wouldn't exist at all i in fairness to the question and and people have trouble with this i i i agree that this has not been super clearly defined and I've wanted to do a source book or world book on it for probably 10 years now and just been focusing on other more immediate things and, and bigger opportunities. Um, but yeah, it, it, I agree of 90% of what, what Ethan Dog said. Uh, I understand what you're saying, Max, but exactly, if a town exists, especially if it's a big town or a freaking city of some kind. And usually cities are going to be on in the books on gonna that. have their own militia it, it, no, it, yeah. it exists because it's got some kind of protector champion militia um whether it's a band of mercs whether it's a band of cyber knights whether it's a freaking dragon whether it's a powerful mage whether it's some kind of alien being a demon vampires there's something there that has protected the people who live there for better or worse 
for that town to even exist. Otherwise, it, it just couldn't happen. Um, yes, you might find a little tribe or, you know, that, that moves around or a little town or, or village. Uh, when I say little, I mean like 50 or 100 people um, that may not have a champion, especially if they're nomadic and they just keep moving from place to place. Uh, Usually but, then they're probably going to have some sort of weapons and armor, right? Kind of well, like and not even that a, a, a small village like that would stuff. probably have psionics or magic users as their defenders. Right. You know? Right. But also remember Simvan and Psy Stalker tribes yes. are a thing as well. Right. Yeah. They're, they're SDC beings. Right. Yeah. So um, keep that in mind as well. Uh, it's not that every single person is automatically that, but they have their, their warrior and protector, uh, echelons of their society as well and why your heroes your, your adventurers may seem like they keep running into mdc things and and they will because they are the exception not the rule these are guys who are are comparatively armed to the teeth looking for adventure looking for things so they're going to run into other powerful things um you know your adventurers don't they're not on the same level as a farmer or, or, or a hunter. This is one thing we could define better too, because uh, the average ley line walker or combat cyborg OCC in rifts is not meant to be the average ley line walker or combat cyborg in rifts, right? The, the, the player characters are a cut above even the common, even the, uncommon examples of ley line walkers and combat cyborgs and, and those aren't a dime a dozen right yeah. these are these are very unique characters even within the world so there's not a techno wizard on every street corner there's not an operator in every town right that is just or not even a full conversion cyborg, cyborg right. right or a headhunter right or cyber right. knight i mean right but i would just say like these even the basic uh necessities to facilitate these times of characters aren't just everywhere so keep right. that in mind too players so so, so when somebody says something like uh why would i ever buy plastic man armor it's stupid it's got what 35 45 mdc or whatever I, I, people can people can shoot a hundreds of mdc it's worthless for me to have this again this is a complaint i've heard quite a bit from people like uh there there's no point in me in me buying this nonsense yet the world sh theoretically should be like oh my god i got plastic man armor like this is amazing somebody put that in the vault somewhere <laughs> train well, with it here's the other thing to remember uh, to go back to just the, the the wilderness discussion if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your armor gets blasted up and it's down your it's last like 11 mdc and you can't find body armor but someone has a suit of plastic man they're willing to trade or sell for you're going to grab it right that's because that's the that's that's that's, that's better than, than 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 nothing right yeah so i mean there, it, a lot of this is relative yeah. right and that's the thing to remember that the player characters are not the power level of just the average folks walking around on rifts earth and so he's yeah, and correct when you show up to that town somebody's going to greet you you know again if you think in like a western context or medieval context sheriff or whatever the sheriff or the knight yeah. who comes up and says i'm sorry boys you know you need to leave your guns out here and your you know your power armor ain't welcome here you need to strip down and come on in and you know what plastic man armor will accept because it's yeah not plastic man armor is like whatevs you know right you can carry yeah. your your your, your sidearm right um and please park your uh, borg over there right, and, and, right exactly and, and if you don't now of course too there should be those kind of consequences because every town's going to have a safe place where you can park your mech uh or store your power armor so yeah you might want to leave one or two of your crew behind to guard it while two or three or four of you guys go into town to check things out to buy um, supplies or, or get supplies or meet your company and, and, and to your question of like well fuck you i'm just gonna walk in who's gonna stop me well you're gonna find out the hard way <laughs> there's, gonna be someone. there's gonna be someone and it's gonna hurt and whoever solves that problem may not want to chat first yeah yeah see, right. see you know he and dog and i get I would say yelled at, but we get commented about it's like, oh my god, have you just played with bad players your entire life? No, actually, most of our players have been good. It's just we've seen this stuff, whether yeah. we were part of it, witnessed it elsewhere, or we were young too. And I can tell yeah. you, as a teenager in high school, <laughs> we played more antagonistically stuff. against our friends than we did against the bad yeah, guys. You know? did some dumb stuff. A lot of these are harder than game master lessons, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. And what one of them is that if you have a glitter boy in your party. 
you are going to have 90% less SDC based encounters than you're, than you would <laughs> normally, because any SDC threat will look at that glitter bar armor and go, mm, Nope, I left the oven on, you know, and just go away and you'll Thank never you. encounter right. them. Well, exactly. Unless you're in a town, right. And then you might have yeah. bar fight. And, yeah. and that's the beauty of it is everyone just like, I think the, the, the wild West analogy, right. The Cowboys and then, you know, Indians type, the wild West type thing, you know, you've got Raiders, you've got people that are going to attack you, but then you get to towns and there might be different rules. You know, just like in a, in, in a, in a Western movie, not every character has a firearm. Right. Um, but, but maybe the most farms do at least have one. Right. Um, it, it's right. Something. Um, it's, it's similar to that. And then the other thing is, is remember just because people are armed with, with firearms doesn't mean that when there's a bar fight, everyone starts gunning each other down. That's, that's a really dastardly oh, thing to do. Right. So you need to play. I, I find that that's a great way to think about rifts. And w especially when you come to these confrontations with, the small pockets of civilization that do exist is it is that's a great way to think about it and and again that can be the whole story and the journey and the adventure on its own is just getting into a town meeting people finding the way to do things like i mentioned with a couple of hover cycle gangs that were basically the protectors of this one this one town um because that's where they that was their home base that's where they were making their raids and other stuff out of so it's funny you say that sean because one of the things that i will do when i'm like running say a D, &D game or something is uh, when you know the proverbial bar fight and somebody draws a sword i stop it for a second especially if it's somebody new to my games or i don't like to stop things but i sometimes have to it's like i want you to just realize that you went down to the sports bar you're watching you know for me the vikings play the bears and you just pulled out a gun right like that oh. that's not normal you're not supposed to do this yeah. right well i had well i in one of the games i i a really great group of players and um actually one of them um was aaron burkett uh, who does uh leads a lot of the savage rift stuff now or all of it basically um and he uh he was playing a cyber knight and someone wanted to get into a fight with him and he did not resort to overt violence the guy was drunk a member of one of these gangs and so the other gang members when they saw him pull a vibro blade or whatever on the cyber knight and then the cyber knight didn't engage with deadly force they pulled that guy back and beat him up more like what are you doing and dragged him away and said we're sorry that'll never happen again right um well and he's standing next to the glitter boy pilot just in his you know his his jumpsuit it, that that's an interesting scenario that's fun role playing that's interesting and that's how you can solve that dichotomy it it's it's just it's it's the escalation of violence and a lot of us are so removed in our lives from actual violence yeah. you have to understand that the escalation of violence is a ladder that you don't you don't blithely just stroll uh up. right so I, I agree with Heathen Dog in this uh, when he just blatantly says it's a lot of game master issues, and I can say that in the past, and by past I mean my younger days, I had that same problem because you know instead of resolving it through consequences like I should have, I well I don't want the players to hate me, well I don't want the play, you know I, I, you know, I, I how do I get the how do I get them out of this? It's not my job to get them out. They got themselves into it, <laughs> you know. So so think about that. How is the law going to react to this? And if this village Let's just say it's a small village, got a couple hundred people. They do some farming. They do some trading. They get their stuff that way. They got one or two protectors and you go and you're a group of six players and you go in and you bully them. Well, you know what? At some point, some one of their trades is going to be some information that gets out there that says we got these bullies in here trying to mess with our town. Well, they're going to jack up all their prices. They're not going to sell oh, you yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're going to give you bad information, right. all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also because the Rift's environment is so... Uh, volatile and, and ever changing, you know, something that, that I've always incorporated is the fact that, okay, you went to town X, you had a great time. The villages are really nice. The, the, the protectors were, it doesn't matter what they are, but they, they were fair and good. And you come back to that town in three months and a, it may not even be there anymore. It's a ghost town or it's, blasted the smithereens uh or it's still there but the people don't seem as kind and friendly anymore and oh gee those those fair judge you know the protectors they're gone and and the new defender the new protector is something evil 
and dangerous. Uh, whether it's a dragon, whether it's you know some powerful something sorcerer, came from wormwood, <laughs> something that came from wormwood. Exactly, it could be any number of things. Those are all elements you should keep in mind. Something crawl out of a rift and and just ate everyone in town. Something crawl out of a rift and and mind controlled everyone in town. Something crawl out of a rift and you know, became the new protector for what diabolical purpose? Because it doesn't seem like a good... Actually, it's rip, funny how in this game called Rifts, you're mentioning a lot of Rifts. That's just weird. Right? <laughs> funny thing. Weird. Weird, weird Kevin. Um, no, there's... In Rifter 85, there's a great adventure that starts off um, that, that book. And it's actually a really wonderful introduction to... You can really see and, 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 and role play through. I think it's a good introduction for players to understand some of these 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 power structures that are going to form within communities and stuff and uh so that i would highly suggest that to a game master who really wants to be able to step through the whole thing with their players um uh, that's another one that's good is um the garnet town gambit for savage rifts um because again it's a small town where there's the influence of federation of magic and the coalition and then the players um and so this is something that, that's in, I, in, in a lot of ways can be very important to establish the tone of your game from the very beginning. One of your early adventures really needs to hit this at some level um, to establish that the, the proper way to deal with these things in the setting. And, and Rift is challenging, um, I think, for players and game masters uh, in, in hopefully a very fun way. I mean, sales would say that's true, but... It's challenging because it's deliberately designed to incorporate any type of adventure, any kind of possibility for adventure or genre or set of heroes that you might ever want to play. So that means it isn't super defined. This whole world is like a medieval D&D world or, or playing fantasy world or a superhero world where, you know, it's our modern world just with superheroes in it you know the different places you travel can be super different too and, and, and that's deliberate too where you're in some little village and then you go to some place else and it's this high-tech wonder uh of course then you have to wonder where did this freaking thing come from uh and, and then there's always and, and why that town or city might not be there when you come back even just three months later is because there are so many powerful things and people like your adventurers in the world that inevitably somebody's going to show up and say, Hey, this town's pretty freaking cool. I want it. It's and my news doesn't necessarily have to travel fast when you don't have communication all the time. So a town being wiped out is going to be, well, everybody would know about that. No, no, no. Or yeah, it's, it's a vampire town now. Oh, oh yeah. Ouch. Oh. That's yeah, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Or so, it's secretly a vampire town now. Exactly. <laughs> like bringing people in, you know, like, oh no, come on, it's all good here. Come on, stay the night. It's fine. So what about this idea of, and I'm not talking nuclear weapons here, but the idea of MDC weapons on the environment itself, whether it's a building, whether it's a tree, whether it's a, a, a whatever it happens to be, a cave system, who cares? MDC weapons aren't just like pew, pew, move on, oh, find your brass on the ground and and, you know, and go. It actually leaves lasting markers, so to speak, and destruction. Yeah, well, that, uh, it doesn't start uh, a forest fire. To, to more clarify, yeah, yeah. Uh, for uh, a lot of the original MDC weapons in, in the Rift's main book were laser type weapons and laser type weapons don't blow up stuff. They go through everything. And like, like Sean just said, forest fires are a thing, especially <laughs> with lasers, right? Or lasers are good, historically not great, but They're, you have to worry about terrible. explosions with, with missiles and plasma weapons and uh, particle beam weapons, stuff like that. They will cause explosions and change the landscapes if you are just willy nilly throwing them about. But how do you, how do you, uh, I don't know. I suppose the, the actual question is knowing all of that, how do you convey that to the players before they screw up and, and turn someplace into a quarry? I don't know if you have to. I mean, well, you can, but that might be a great adventure where, 
they turn someplace into a quarry and, and, and you as the game master say, now stop and look around and look what you did and you describe it. And hopefully they go, that was horrible. We can never be this loose and, and destructive again. Uh, then again, some may not care. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Fusion block down there. Hey, 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 come on. It was necessary. <laughs> you, you, know, you can also illustrate that by, hey, that fun little town that you guys visited and nothing really happened. You resupplied and you come back and they find it that way. Yeah. And you describe it. Explain, you know, I, I, I love to do it. That's what I used to really love having. Uh, I don't use them quite as much, but I, I love having NPCs in, in my game, even if it's just one, because you can use him or her or it to convey certain things that the players may not necessarily be thinking of, be conscious of. You can say, oh, hey, you know, this this character can say or do something that the rest of the group goes, what? Oh, maybe we shouldn't do that. Or holy crap, that is dangerous. Or that would be awful. Um, well, and another thing you can do, too, that I've done with written adventures and other things that I've run, too, is like maybe they're 10 miles out. Right, they're heading towards some town, and they hear that you know. I maybe even have people roll checks depending on their weapon proficiencies and stuff, and they they start recognizing. Oh, that's oh, we're hearing a lot of noise. That sounds like mini missiles and railgun fire, or that's definitely that color would be maybe plasma if it you know a shot went stray into the air, right? And so you can kind of show them what just a little bit of railgun and plasma and laser and mini missile fire can do when they're 10 miles away and they hear it because the weapons like that, you're going to be announcing your, your location uh, to everything in the region. Again, this is, this come back, come back to how dangerous the wilderness is and traveling quietly is often very, very, very advisable. Um, and, but you know, if they see, if they hear or see power armor strafing, strafe running, you know, uh, a town uh, or something like that uh, say, because the town's full of DV. So yep. Yeah. Same as pilot doesn't care um, or mistakes the DBs for the core problem. Um, the, but these are ways that you can show a lot of that before the gunfire starts for the players. If you want to, um, then the other thing is, is yeah, um, whether you do the times 100, one mega damage equals hundred SDC or one mega damage equals 10 SDC. A lot of people find that easier to kind of grok and math between um, and it helps smooth out some storytelling for some people. Um, either way, that's mega damage weapons are doing a ton of extra damage to things and you're blasting, you know, it's not just, oh, you hide behind a rock. Good. Use cover, but now that rail gun or that plasma cannon hit the rock and it's gone. You need new cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, uh, Max is a stickler for this. When when you are talking MDC weapons against something that's SDC like a rock, you should call it concealment. <laughs> than cover. Sometimes but that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, can't see you, can still shoot you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, well, and this kind of gets back to the travel a little bit, too, is if you're plowing through trees, assuming you could plow through trees or just, you know, tromp through them and knock shit over and not give a fuck. You have a 30-foot robot, whatever. You're changing the terrain, and there's going to be somebody who's not happy about that. Yeah. I am uh, going to now make a clutch of MDC tree ants. <laughs> and as soon as the shot with, goes wild with, with hobbits on you. top throwing rocks yeah, there there you go. Go. <laughs> uh, no that that's that's some good so i don't think we need to beat this down too much i think anything that i ask unless uh Hindog, you think i missed something but the idea that i wanted to put out there is that there, uh, myself included i i am in this camp is i just felt that man this world seems like it's supposed to be mostly sdc and mdc it's not mystical but it's like oh, you know, that's MDC stuff. We don't want to mess with them or like, hey, yeah, you need to keep that out there where every game I've been in or even when I talk to people about games, it's always like, man, we do all this. We do this, you know, MDC everywhere. MD, you know, MDC, MDC, MDC. Everybody's got MDC. Plastic Man's stupid. Why wear it? You know, it's like that doesn't GM seem issue. like it's right to me. No, it's not. It's a GM issue. Yeah, and and, I, and and that's one thing that is is tougher. But yeah, for GMs, I highly suggest curating what's available if you're in these tiny villages and towns, right? And and you know, again, this the leaning into the resource scarcity for the for the survival aspect and the and the survival horror aspect of the game is really going to help feed into 
how special the combat cyborg or the glitter boy is especially but then the other thing about those things is unless they can get to the right kind of repair facilities and have a whole pile of credits um then they're gonna that's you don't want to just be taking hundreds of mega damage in a battle for for no reason either because right. um that is that's that's going to permanently that's going to cost you thousands and thousands of credits and, th and that that's if you can find the facility to actually get it done that, that's because like, you're in victory right yeah so support classes like the operator are invaluable for anyone who has power armor and even it's not just armor, a, even regular the, armor yeah and one well, the other thing about the operator is is do they have the the tools they need do they have you know if if, uh, if it's just some armor damage they they need supplies to, to yeah. make those repairs right well, they that, that, only, I, I believe it says in the operator that there's a certain amount of of, of mdc that they can repair before they need to have facilities or resources right. or whatever right. but, so, but my point is know. is even just having the supplies like resources is yeah. different than a facility right yeah. but if, yeah if they need to overhaul your whole combat cyborg because his arm's broken from a mini missile impact or something or your your glitter boy lost mo you know all of his mdc or something then it's you you're talking about you're going to need overhaul type facilities yeah you need a factory you need time and money right. and supplies yeah. right yep well i also want to point out this is why ley line walkers and all sorcerers are on the coalition's hit list that's like enemy number one because yeah, you have all these weapons that are invisible until they're used. You got it. Yeah. And they're limitless. Yeah, they just regenerate. Unlike they armor, regenerate. unlike Eclipse, they don't charge armor themselves. Yep, there you well, go. I think that's a great Tomorrow way to Tomorrow is going to be just as dangerous, whereas all of my CS troops have taken damage that in the field cannot be replenished. Right. So we so we talked about the operator a moment ago. We're talking about Leyla and Walkers now. Let's just segue into the final topic and just talk about. There's this weird premise, and I'm st I'm talking to the audience out there. Everybody else, you, the people on the panel, can close their ears. I put out a community post out there because I keep hearing about oh the rifts is unbalanced and it sucks because it's unbalanced and oh the OCCs are horrible. Uh, these why would you ever play this when you could play that? Yada yada. So I built it up. I started with a community post. Then I had another one that just kept leaning into this. And then I literally put out there, okay, tell me what OCCs are broken and why. I can go look at those comments right now. Zero comments mentioning a broken OCC. I think somebody mentioned some sieve, something or another, saying that's the only one that's overpowered, but didn't put any reason why. So are they or are they not? But let, let's, let's talk about this for just a moment, because I'm going to mention the one that was kind of consistent in our Discord chat about this. And then I'm going to bring up one that Heathen Dog says. I'm going to do this all in one breath. Elemental Fusionist. Why would I play that over a Leyland Walker? And then let's do uh, uh, Heathen Dog. And correct me if I'm wrong, Heathen Dog, but you think the Mystic is worthless compared I, to? I, I, yeah. Pick, pick a lane, man. Come on. I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. But the uh, t talking about uh, overpowered, I would, I would go after the Shifter. And there's, there's logical reasons for that. But uh, the, the the first one you said, what was the first one? The uh, Elemental Fusion. Yeah, that, that that thing was made for a video game, it or from from a video game. It it it, it wasn't made for the, the the tabletop game initially, and so coming at it, I'm I'm giving it side eye right right out of the bat. You know, like I'm gonna uh, come on now. Uh, it's it's like the, the the candy crush version of a video game i don't know but uh and then then when 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 you read it you're like man this is i guess neat but this uh the the elemental fusionist is made to be like a hermit you know like there 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 is no coalition of hermits so being in a group is is kind of weird out of the gate for an elemental fusionist because they're supposed to be backwoods bastards yeah, one yeah. of the complaints that uh, somebody did uh, write about that one was the fact that it can't even use ley lines. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they don't actually get PPE from ley lines. They, they they get the boost just like any magic user does, but okay. they they can't actually draw upon PPE from ley lines like like a lot of I don't want to be pure you know magic users can. And so why would you do it? That that that's that's the least of the concerns for me. Just the whole role play aspect and how they're built is not. It is not, in my opinion, built for team play. They're they're not teams. They're not team guys. I mean, I think you could say the same thing about a wilderness scout. 
in a lot of ways. Well, yeah, but he has a purpose for a team. You know, he did like he he uh, going about yourself is great. You know, you you can be a trapper and live all alone. You know, I'm Lobo. I need no one. I hunt alone. Wait, right, yeah, you you can be all that, but you know, yeah, you an element of you- motivation and a character. Yeah. Yeah, a wilderness scout has the motivation to save people's lives to do all that stuff. But a, an right. elemental feeling I don't see anything in their description that in, inherently says that they have to value those things. Then so, so I'm just saying, role playing is your. I get it. I get it. But if like there's a reason that, that comes with the, with the wilderness scout, then I don't. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, but the, the, writer, that's necessarily. I, I understand, cool. but the, in the OCC of wilderness scout, it does not specifically say that they they are almost exclusively loners who are from the the deep woods and stuff Kevin's like that the like books. you might want to be fusion. careful about how <laughs> recently you read that um <laughs> well, so, so some of the examples that I, I, look I, I, up. my reading okay. is, right? All right. <laughs> is that look a lot up. of them are, are 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 deep woods trackers and things like that look i mean any character can be you know anti-social right um sure. at my reading of of the elemental fusionist now i'm gonna i'm gonna be straight up um i've never had an elemental fusionist in one of my palladium rift games but i wrote the elemental fusionist for savage rifts so i'm just going to be be real straight up that for me they're very blended in my mind so as i talk about it i'm going to talk about it from that perspective so um just to throw that out there because you know if i usually i'm really like straight up well, on, well here, here's another one real quickly because i'll you just I stay on the same vein power and abilities that they can do right but i mean the element of fusionist is really neat i would say they are like wilderness children right um and that's one of the things that's special about them but they also want to protect um humans and nature and a lot of different things and they understand elementals more than 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 normal humans or any other mostly usually people can't understand elementals and or their motivations right. and things like that so i think that there's a lot of ways that a good game master and player can definitely get an elemental fusionist into a group or a party that's part of a plot that's going on right um or maybe it's just something as simple as the elemental fusionist fell in love with the mystic who cares right um th- it could be as simple as that right or Bad the taste, but okay or their cousins, the wilderness scout, right? Their brothers, the wilderness scout. I mean, it could be as something as simple as that. That's true. Really That's normal true. human connections. Um, but th- this is th- this is assuming that that the game master has hasn't made the the hand waving wilderness mistake that apparently a lot of people do. Because well, if, it's the if, same problem with the ranger in Dungeons and Dragons, right? Where it's yeah, like where yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you they don't wave, this, right? I mean, we, you, yeah, you know, if you hand wave it, then then the wilderness scout and the elemental fusionists are basically worthless. You know, like what, why would you, why would you even have one in your party? There's no well, reason to like hand wave all travel. Well, the elemental fusion has very powerful magics and stuff. And the other thing is, is they may not treat ley lines the same way as other things, but, but places of elemental power can, can really boost them and be easier for them to contact elementals through. So that's another thing to consider is they have their own kind of map of power in regions. What, what about the concept? Or or a, a water base? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so one of the things that uh, I forget whose game it was, but I know Heathen Dog was in it. We were talking about uh, psychic powers, and I, I like the concept of the burster. I like I, I like elemental magic in general. So whether it's a burster or you make it some other element, I, I'm I'm on board with it. But uh, it's like if you're not playing a mind melter, you're just you're playing on hard mode. You know. <laughs> I, no, I, that I was your comment. Sentiment. <laughs> I get the sentiment. I don't agree with it. That was your comment. It was literally let's, let's your let's comment. See what Kevin and Sean said. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. What Kevin? Why don't you talk about the elemental fusionists a bit? Because I mean, I know that Shane Shane Neville, right, is the one who uh, created the idea for it. I actually was uh, Trent Ward. Oh, it was Trent Ward. Okay. Um, okay. One of the writers. On, uh, yeah, he was Charles one of Allen. the uh, one of the main guys behind it. Nice guy, and uh, no, I, I agree pretty much with everything Sean said. And my my point of view for, of it is simply, it's another type of magic. If it doesn't float your boat, you think he's too wussy, uh, or too weird, or or too whatever, then don't play him. Uh, I, I I liked the idea that this is someone who 
was probably someone living off the land in the wilderness, you know, in a family clan someplace and or wandering and, you know, they found a way to use a type of magic and no one else really looked at. And I liked the idea that it was like conflicting magics, like fire and water and earth and air and that kind of thing. I, I liked sort of that duality. Um, that there's sort of this clash within themselves because they don't know what to make of this world and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, I'm not offended by anyone who doesn't like a particular <laughs> character uh, or, it, or OCC. I mean, that's that's your call. You think he's a wuss? Don't use him. Well, uh, I really wish I would have got better examples. Like I said, I was trying to, I was leading people to the example and then they fell off a cliff and didn't say anything. So it's difficult for me because I don't believe in class balance. I like playing things that are interesting as long as if I believe in the, the word I use constantly is viable. As long as the character is viable, I I, I will play it. I, I, I that's really what it comes down to. I, I, let me throw out one last example here that I remember somebody complained about this is many years ago. Uh, he Dog remembers our friend, Bob. And he hated the Juicer's Handbook, or Juicer, sorry, the Juicer Uprising book. Uh-huh. And he's and and he was like, "Why even play a real Juicer? Every single one in here is way more powerful. There's no point in playing a Juicer anymore. Pick one out of this book." Now, I, I have an easy answer for that. I'm sure you have an easy answer for that. But for the folks out there who like, well, if you get this book and do this other book and say this thing and get Cosmonite and so on and so forth, it's too powerful. Well, don't don't use those books. Well, the other thing is, I, I I don't know if that's I don't know if I agree with that because I mean, just juicer up. There's a lot of people who have juicer uprising and still play regular juicers, and I think the yeah. reason is, is all of the juicers specialize. Titan, they specialize, and there's there's yeah. trade offs. Mm-hmm. All now, of them have if, if you want to talk about just the mega juicer, well, you got a point. Okay, the the, the mega juicer is a juicer times ten in pretty much every way. I mean, so, yeah, they've got MDC especially. Is in yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about that. Then I, I I can get on board with 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 your boat here, but yeah, all the other ones, the Phaeton <laughs> Juicer, the Hyperion <laughs> Juicer, all of them, they're all very specialized. They're either stronger than other juicers, but much slower, faster than other juicers, but nowhere near as strong. Regenerate a whole lot more, but they 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 they, they can't run for crap. You know, they, it's a trade off in all of these right. specialized variants. Right. So unless you're just talking about the Mega Juicer, I don't know what you're talking about. And I think this rabbit juice is a great example of one that you didn't even mention because the trade-offs are so big, right? It gets all this power, but it's the 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 having to get that dragon's blood and all that yeah. stuff is yeah, really that's, that's dangerous. Big problem. Yeah. So would you yeah. say that that's a big problem with just people hand waving and making it sound, oh yeah, you can just play that and there are no con- again consequences at all. I mean, one of those juicers what lives half as long as a regular juicer. I, I don't know anybody that actually plays into the fact that you only live five, ten years. Well, I think that, that that's partly because most campaigns like don't go that, that long. Um, and, and I hope they do play into that because I, I, to me that that's a really important aspect of, of uh, the juicer. And one, one of my, my favorite roles from uh, uh, Savage, Savage, Savage Rifts, Savage Worlds for Rifts is um, Blaze of Glory, where you, mm. where you can choose to go out in a Blaze of Glory and uh man if that isn't reflective of the juicer i don't know what is and uh, i love that idea uh you know the burn the burn and and i also love the idea that if you really love your character either you're going out in a blaze of glory if you're a juicer or you're gonna find the courage to detox but then you have to with that with all those <laughs> yeah, if it's more than two years you gotta flip a coin and maybe you're not gonna make it anyway you know oh yeah exactly oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I try to put a lot of different character into all the different OCCs and, you know, they're not going to you know resonate with everybody and that's okay. Cause they're, they're not written for everybody. They're written for that person who wants to play a more oddball or perhaps a more cerebral character like the rogue scholar or, uh, a body doc or, um, you know, a wilderness scout or vagabond who not necessarily more cerebral, but is much more diverse. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, they're not for everybody. Just like, you know, in comic books, you've got characters who, you know, Batman, sure. He's got a lot of gadgets and shit. And depending on what version of Batman, he can be pretty badass. but mm-hmm. you know, 
a lot of these guys are just I'd rather be Superman. <laughs> ordinary people versus Wonder Superman Woman. or Wonder Woman or Thor or the Hulk. Or I mean, Flash, whatever. You, right. I mean, are you going to say, oh, gee, Captain America is a piece of shit because I just, want, I just want power because, you know, I'll, I'll play the Hulk or I'll play Thor or I'll play, you know, yeah. Captain Marvel because, yeah, you know, these are the people who Marvel. either don't understand or, or, uh, haven't been have, have haven't experienced it that Captain America and Hawkeye, what Sean was saying, they are not important as powerhouses. They they are important to to move the group forward to keep them going in the right direction. That's Captain America. Hawkeye, he's up high all the time. He sees more than everybody else. He sees the entire scope of a battle. He uh, he he can he can re report things that are coming up that are going to be a problem and the entire group can can ready themselves to deal with it. These are important parts of a role-playing group that that is action-oriented even though these specific characters themselves are not the quote-unquote powerhouses. Black Black Widow Natasha Romanov, I mean, she's yeah. like your thief, right? She's watching yeah. out for all these clandestine And who doesn't love her? I mean, she's, she's amazing. amazing. Everyone loves Information that character. gathering alone for for her is is paramount in success in a lot of of the Avengers comics and movies. Just her and gathering and and conspiracies that they deal with, right? In a yep. lot of the plots. So I try to provide a vast range of characters, even if I sit back and go, you know, one in a thousand people are going to play a rogue scholar. But for that one in a thousand people, I want that character to be there so they can play it. I don't think it's that low. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong. About, it's probably not road. that low, but it, it's it's a lot closer to one in a thousand than it is one in ten. I, I know, I know. Uh, what's his name? France forty two thousand. I'm sorry, I've got your name wrong. I know he super chatted, and we got to get to that at some point here. But uh, I think it was him that said, or is him or his brother, weird guy, which which put in there is like, why would I ever play, say, like a vagabond when I get more skills as the rogue scholar? It just doesn't make any sense. Like things like that. You know, people are looking at these onesies and twosies. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is my experience. My experience is those people aren't actually comparing themselves to the setting that they're in. Right. They're con they're comparing themselves to the player sitting next to them, and they want to be the center of attention, not well, that guy. Right. Or they're looking at just the number of skills. I mean. The the one of the things I do really like about the Rifts Ultimate Edition um, that I think is really great is Kevin added a lot of abilities for characters like that. So one of my buddies, um, Mike, he uh, we were we were play testing stuff and just just having a good time. And I just call my my games play tests because usually I'm throwing in weird stuff for them to deal <laughs> with. Talking to Kevin about how it goes, um, but I mean, he wanted he the group needed someone like a wilderness scout, but he actually built a vagabond that filled a lot of that stuff because I think it's the, the was it eyeball fellow or whatever. Um, he, he he loved that ability; he thought it was great, and so he built his character around it because he. But his character inhabited; he knew where he was from in the Texas Freelands. He knew where he had been. He knew people he had known. I mean, it was a whole thing where we and we and it's not that he like did some crazy backstory for his character that was out of control or anything, but we just, we, we, as a game master, I helped him build that as the campaign progressed as well. Um, it, and, and he knew people in this town or he knew somebody that used to be in that town. And, and so it, it, you, you know, that's the, the kind of intangibles of good role-playing and character mm -hmm. building um, that, you know, you can get, you know, a lot of fun, just by playing a character that interests you. Yeah, I think that I think the people who are looking at just stats mm -hmm. are looking at it from more of a two things. One more, more sort of a, a, as a game, a, a, as a game mechanic, as, as, as rather than a character to play or a storytelling experience, cooperative storytelling, and, 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 and or are looking for. A character who's powerful so it's like well, i want to be powerful whether it's because they want the attention or they just like power i've known plenty of people There's nothing who wrong with that weren't looking for attention but were just into powerful characters they wanted to be they had some vision of what the characters they wanted to play should be and they just wanted really powerful characters so they're going to play juicers or crazies or glitter boy pilots or 
or uh, Cyber Knights. They just wanted. So, so would most of those players though complain about the other classes, or would they just pick the one that they like? Because no, I guess I guess I'm addressing the people that specifically. Oh my God, why would I do anything else but this? It's worthless. Yeah, I wouldn't focus too much on it. I mean, I know that's kind of the core of our discussion, right? But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, well, that's just negative. Well, that's right? my point. I think those people are focused on power. Okay. And, and, and they're not thinking about it as, and, and let's face it, we all know lots of people who, who we may even love and adore who are just into, I want to be powerful. I want my character to be powerful. I always play the same freaking character, basically, because this is what I, I am. That's how I speak. Min max my stats. And that- or what they want to their ideal. And that's okay. It's all fine. But they're not stopping to think that. There are going to be other people who don't want to play like that. They want to play a more nuanced character or an overtly weaker or oddball character because that's appealing to them because they're looking at it from more of a character and story point of view as opposed to, I'm a badass motherfucker, which is okay. They're both okay, but I'm throwing in those other things for people who don't want to just be a badass motherfucker. As a game master, too, and that's kind of your challenge is to weave all that together into a narrative that's interesting and appealing to mm-hmm. everyone. Now, that means everybody has to have some some, some personal buy-in, and everybody's got to be, you know, friendly, cooperative humans at a table. Um, but uh, I, I think one thing to think about is Lord of the Rings. I mean, if you look at it as Gandalf is the most powerful, right? So and why would anyone want to play anything other right. than Gandalf? Or the elf. Not a fucking hobbit. Because the Legolas <laughs> character, the Gimli <laughs> character, Boromir, those are the fighters. Those are the really powerful rangers and all this other stuff. But also you look at that story, if it wasn't for Sam... Mm-hmm. Frodo would have died, right? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Merry and Pippin, you know, all these other things wouldn't have happened. And they Star did run, run around, yeah. more powerful, at least they went to war, right? Yeah. Do you um, think it could be that a lot of players don't want to be the sidekick? I know when I was younger, I didn't want to be the sidekick. Now I, I kind of like playing that stuff. But... Sidekick, but, you know, don't, don't poo-poo someone else and don't think, well, there's no reason that anyone else would want to be the Wilderness Scout or the, the elemental fusionist, or I had a, I had a guy uh, that I game with a wonderful guy. And it was, it was mystic. It was, he played a priest uh, from, from new West literally had no powers. Right. (laughs) And, and not even like some crazy skill monkey, but he loved that character and he played it really, really well. And he was an integral part of the group. And guess what? There was a lot of times when he, he was the diplomatic glue that held everything else together and progressed the story for everyone else. And because it's not, you know, it's role playing. It's not, this isn't um, a tactical combat game where you just go and defeat X, Y, Z, and then move to the next encounter. Um, like a there's nothing wrong game. with them like that. I, I love can be, right, yeah. but I, but I, I mean, I, that that's Hero Quest. I love Hero Quest, right? When I was mm-hmm. a kid, I love Hero Quest, and there's nothing wrong with Hero Quest. My point is just that this isn't Hero Quest, right? Now that doesn't mean that people are focused on that aspect, the Hero Quest type, you know, gamey type uh, uh, tactical combat aspect. That's not bad. That's not wrong, right? That's okay. But just remember that there's other parts of the game too, and. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with people wanting to focus on that. So, yeah, as long as it plays well into the game that everyone is agreeing to play and the game master is running, interested in running, uh, you know, that's part of getting everybody's buy-in at the beginning of, of your campaign and, and during your campaign, um, monitoring that. So, but, 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 yeah, that's, 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 I think, the main thing to think about. So, Max, you made a comment that, you know, well, you know, not a lot of people want to play the sidekick. I, I had never designed any of these characters thinking they're a sidekick. They're just different. Aaron Tarn and is not a sidekick. And it, 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 Winslow it, Thorpe is her sidekick. Y- yes. That, that's a great analogy. And it, it's just, it's up to the player and the game master. So it's a little more challenging for the game master because the game master, as Sean said, has to make sure he gives that character some something that he can deal with, uh, champion, um, used his advantage. And then it's up to the player who picked that character and, and to, to make the best of that character. And I think if, the, if someone who picks that character has in mind what they want to be and what the, how the character is going to function, 
Uh, and it doesn't matter. I, I know I've told this story again. I tell it often because it's just a great one. And uh, so I apologize if I told it on this show before. But I, I was playing Beyond the Supernatural. It was a tournament game. And uh, one of the characters, one of my pre-rolled characters, is like an 80-year-old scholar. Uh, <laughs> and, and he's an expert on books and stuff. And they're up against all these, these bad guys who are very powerful. And this guy's bringing in demons and whatnot. He's not a shifter. But he might as well have been. He's got all these demons serving him and stuff. And uh, the whole, and they had some pretty badass characters. Again, this isn't a modern setting, but you know they had, you know, a gun bunny guy and a strong man, and uh, I think uh, the equivalent of a burster and, and somebody else. And they all get their asses handed to them. And I'm I'm sitting there as the game master going. Well, this will be a little disappointing because they're all about to die. And the guy who's playing the 82-year-old professor, Professor Higgins, says, I have a fountain pen in my pocket, don't I? And I'm like, yeah, you do. And he goes, well, I'm talking to the, the big bad guy, the shifter, equivalent of a shifter. I'm going to un undo the, the cap and I'm going to get it in my hand. I'm going to slowly, so no one notices, pull it out and have it at my side. And I'm like, okay. And he's goading the big bad guy into talking about his plans, you know, sort of the classic, well, we're all going to die. You might as well get yeah. plans are kind of thing. And the guy's like, whoa, yeah. And he's, you know, giving them the whole spiel on how they're going to take over you know the united states and this is just the first step and there are fools that ever think they can stop them and the guy playing the 82 year old professor says so i'm really close i'm like within striking range right and i'm like yeah and he goes i want to try to plunge my fountain pen into the guy's <laughs> juggler and i'm like you can try rolls a natural 20. Oh rips it, pulls it out in such a way that he rips it even more. And there's blood just blowing out. The the big baddie is like, oh, 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 falls over dead. The demons are all like, what the hell just happened? What are we supposed to do? He's the boss. We, uh, uh. They're freaking out. They're panicking. That gives the other group, you know, the rest of the players, uh, you know, the, the burster ca type character is like, I flame this guy, the other guy. Can I leap for a gun from this guy? And, and the next thing you know, the whole battle turns around. The 82-year-old professor with not one combat skill saved a day because he played smart. He played as a team, and he and, and he made a great role. And that's why I love dice, and that's why I love fucking role-playing. Because you <laughs> never know what's going to happen. And a smart player who takes a chance can change the whole landscape. I thought they were all freaking dead. All right, hang on, hang on, terrible. hang on. One, one second. Somebody clip that. Clip, clip that. That was awesome. The pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Do that now. Do that now. That's why I fucking love role playing. Clip that. <laughs> no, no, but but I, I I agree I agree with them, and this is why I don't understand. I can't. I know it's a meme that I play Borgs all the time. But I play Borgs because I think that they give me a compelling, a compelling backstory. Like, and I'm not talking some 40 page nonsense, just something that I can bite into. Kevin, one of my favorite things that you did in terms of riffs, remember, I'm not the riffs guy here, is I loved what you did in Riffs Ultimate Edition when you actually added your inputs to things like the juicer and the crazy because it really did. I never sat at a table that had those considerations. Mm -hmm. And when you wrote those, I was like, how is it we never saw this before? I mean, to be fair, I never played the classes, but we just looked like 10 years, five years, whatever. Psh, just give me my stats, man. And I'm just like, that is that is awesome. And the funny thing is, is that is how I played my cyborgs. Why am I a full conversion board? Because it was that or death. And, you know, and so it's like that same concept of the uh, of the juicer. I love that. The, to me, that's my favorite edition that you put in a Rift's Ultimate Edition. And I'd, I'd love to see more of that kind of stuff when it comes to these classes. I love the idea of playing, a, again, viable is important. But I don't need to be the combat monster. I don't have to be the smartest guy. What I, You know what? All I want to do, this is I'm being selfish here. I'm talking about me. But all I want to do at the table is know that 
I have one thing. We could have 99 things we all share in common. I just want one thing I can do that you can't. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the rest of the overlap is good because if you can't do it, then I can help you there. I want he and dog, same thing. I want him to have one thing that he can do that none of the rest of us can't because then we do have at least something special that the game master can look at. But ultimately, I don't care about the overlap. I don't care how many skills you have. But if I'm sitting there like, why am I doing everything? He has 30 more skills than me, plus he's at plus 20% to everything. There's no point in me doing anything. I can understand why somebody would be a bit grumpy about that, but I've never, never seen that. Just never seen that. Well, and it all matters where your head's at. Like I said, role playing is very personal. I, 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 you know, we do our Christmas surprise package uh, every year. Uh, it'll be like year twenty six or twenty seven this year. And you're uh, talking about one of the early rifters. And, 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 and yeah, and, and you know, we have a comment section where people can write a brief comment. And this guy was saying how when he was younger. All I want to do is play power characters, juicers and glitter boys. And uh, one of his favorite games forever was uh, where him and the whole team were just a, a glitter boy squad. And I guess they blew the snot out of everything <laughs> they encountered. And it was all about boom, boom and power. And he says like, but you know, it's funny. And, and, he, and it, it just fits into this topic because he's like, it's funny because when I was that young man and I just wanted to fight and blow things up. I wondered who would ever want to play a this or a that, you know, they're just, they're worthless characters. And now he was in his forties and he's like, you know what I'm playing, Kevin, I'm playing a rogue scholar and I'm <laughs> loving every minute of it, you know, and it's just, and, and by the way, it's okay. If you just want to be what, what is generally termed a power gamer, I don't give a, crap what anyone plays because you might come across fairies i just want you to have fun so if you're having fun that's great it doesn't matter whether i agree with how you're playing or i think you know i I don't agree with some of your thoughts about other characters or whatever if you're having fun that's great the end so and and i design all my characters have fun and by the way i love the fucking mystic (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well oh, you can kevin you can love the mystic and that's okay <laughs> <laughs> well you know i i would I, I really wish this topic could have been more uh, i don't want to say controversial I, I again the folks that keep saying i i know they'll happen to this I'll send you the messages, the comments that come up on this video. Uh, but uh, I, I'm sure it will come up like, oh, you should have talked about this. Well, I, I don't know all the details of every Rift's o- OCC that's been ever written. I just don't. I'm, I, I do after the bomb. And Heathen Dog and I, we weren't going to just scour every book we could find. We got comments. And no, I didn't read them all. But we got comments from people on our Discord. But ultimately, they end up kind of backtracking on it. It was like, you know what? Yeah, I guess... Because other people will actually say, no, what you think is OP isn't OP. And ultimately, to me... He and Doc, correct me if I'm wrong, but it always seems like it comes back to the game master didn't pay attention to the characters in the group or the players were pulling one over on the game master. I, it just seems like every time it comes back to the game master. But I, I want to mention that too, because when I was doing the Q&A um, for Savage Rifts, um, one of the things that we got to a certain point where 60 75 percent of the questions were actually more like game master questions as opposed to actual rules questions it was well how do i deal with this weird situation or how do I... a lot of times the game master put themselves in the situation right or did need to learn to put their foot down and 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 what you know this player is too powerful well yeah you gave a sword of atlantis to the glitter boy pilot yeah um he didn't earn it right and now it's causing all these problems or something right but um the, the, the thing is, is a lot of the answers to these questions are actually in the OCCs. And those are the answers for the players and the game master. So if you're a game master, and you have a hard time dealing with a certain kind of character. I would say go read the OCC again, right? If you're a player and you're like, why would anyone play this? Well, maybe go read the OCC again, because in a lot of time, a lot of times it's going to show you the challenge, the intended challenges and struggles of those characters, whether it may not be an overt game mechanic. But if the whole thing is, yeah, your headhunter was maimed in war and 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 got a bionic arm and an eye and all this stuff and, and a leg on along his left side because he got blown up with a grenade or something, or he's now a full conversion side. Well, I mean, that's part of the story. That's part of the drive. That's part of the interest. You know, the rogue scholar 
doesn't really matter unless they have big goals, right? Unless they're trying to change the world, who cares? But that's the same thing for all the characters. Unless they're trying to do something significant, who cares? So go read those again as the player and as the game master. And I think it'll solve a lot of your problems because I think that's part of what's happening is people are like, well, you know, they just go look at the skill list or they just go look at some of the powers of the gear. And they're like, oh, well, why would anyone play that? Well, maybe read through the whole thing and then come back to it, right? Um, the shifter has a lot of downsides and a lot of scary stuff that can happen to them, right? So you really can play touch and go. And as the game master, go read the shifter and that's going to help you deal with if you think the shifter's overpowered or something, right? Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, a lot. A lot of it is it's really well written, and especially that's again one of my favorite things about the ultimate edition is it, it was a nice balancing pass, and it brought a little more depth and intended uh, the, maybe some of the intended lore was more fully fleshed out um, with some gameplay abilities and other notes in the in the in the book. So there's there's and, some. Oops, sorry, go on. I was going to say, and, and he mentioned the, the notes. I, I appreciate you mentioning that you liked those and would like to see mm -hmm. more because I, mm -hmm. I often struggle with, should I put in my personal aside here or should I just leave it? Because um, I don't want to be too in people's face. Yeah, but don't you weren't preaching about it. You, you really just said, like, we're consider lost out this. Here, man. So I, that, that's what I liked about it. It wasn't preaching. I, you're playing it wrong if you don't do this. You, you just were like, hey, consider this. You have five years of life left. Uh, how, what, puts you, what puts you in this spot? I was like, yeah, I never thought about that. I don't know yeah. why I didn't, but I never. And so, yeah, read the book. Read the core book. I mean, that's got a lot of it. The, the, the adventure guide has got a lot of um, Game Master yep. suggestions yep, yep. and help. Um, and uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll I'll talk about a book that has my name on it, but the uh, the Game Master's Handbook for Savage Rifts. Um, I, I put a lot of elbow grease into it for the second edition. Added a section on high octane horror, but um, just go to the section of the book called um, like Living in America, running running Savage Rifts. Can you hold that book up again, rip. please, for folks? Now, this for the cool. folks out there, like, well, Savage Rifts isn't Rifts. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of one of them. But but, but hear this out. I know a lot of you out there who watch our show love the AD&D First Edition Dungeon Master Guide and use in every freaking game you ever consider playing, whether it's D&D or otherwise. Well, you know what? You can pick up that book from Savage uh, Savage Rifts and use it for your Palladium games and everything else. Nothing wrong with grabbing. A lot of you out there say that you hate GURPS as a system, but love it for resources. Well, guess what? You can use that book as a resource. Yeah, this book isn't really, this book is more about game mastering. It's not really about rules until the very end of the book. It's actually more about running the setting, game mastering, how to do firefights, how to, I mean, just how to run all these different thematic stuff that we're talking about. And I worked on it personally to try and make sure it was a really great, concise reference for people. And so um, I'm going to tout it, you know, yeah. <laughs> just like anything else. But yeah, this, I think this book is good for that. And again, it's, it, it's all riffs and, and all of this stuff is um, are, are, there's a lot of great resources, but you know, we want to point you to what we think are some of the good things that we personally worked on. Obviously. Mm -hmm. And as far as game masters, look, the game master has the toughest part of the job. Right. But in my opinion, because I'm almost always the game master, it's also the most fun part of the job because yeah. you are the universe. You can make whatever you want happen. Uh, I mean, not in, in, in a dick move way, but I mean, mm -hmm. in, in a good way to bring the story together and to make it dynamic and powerful and, and fun for for the players and to me that that's it it's awesome and, and so i think part of the problem for game masters is they forget a couple core rules one is it's a storytelling game two it's all about the the, the characters which means the players and of course your villains and 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 three have fun don't overthink it but i mean Think, do think, and put in consequences. That'll help drive you. One of the things that really helps me is the alignments because it's a moral right. code. And so I always say, as long as I have the basic stats for my character, for any character, and I have his alignment, I can take that character into any environment because I know with the alignment, I know his moral code, so I know how he's going to react if he's 
if he's anarchist and selfish, he's going to be mostly out for himself, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to lie or not lie or do whatever. He's going to probably it, take advantage of people rather than just help them through altruism. Exactly. Like, I mean, yeah. he may help, but he's going he's to do expect a little something, something. If yeah. it helps you, right? Roll, exactly. If you, if it helps you roll their alignment randomly. Then, because for, then for NPCs, for NPCs yeah. right? Because then it's like, yeah, you, you know, do you use a name generator, a description generator? Those are there's tons of them on the on the web, um, and I, I, I like the ones that are more American uh, uh, based, you know, because they they tailor to stuff that you that it just feels like it's more riffs when people have American names, in my opinion. But um, that then you've got that and that, and then but. Are, they can't. There's no. There's no. Even with uh, Ciara, you can't tell what someone's alignment is, right? That's the beauty of it. The game master holds all the cards, yeah. and that can be just really fascinating and interesting way to deal with stuff. Yeah, and, and and feel empowered as a game master. Don't feel like, oh my god, I've got the weight of everything on me. I got to tell a good story. I got to know the rules inside and out. No, you know what? That's why there's a rule book. You forget a rule, you look it up. Oh, that's how that worked. I get that it. ruins the pacing of my game. <laughs> you have to spend an hour reading the damn thing, but if you're taking five minutes to skim something, yeah, or bathroom doesn't. break, do it during a bathroom. Yeah, break. exactly. Yeah. It's like, well, hey guys, why don't we pause it here? And you know, and where it gets, I think, what what's roughest for game masters is when you have to. And I think one of you guys mentioned it earlier. Where you kind of have like time out. I'm stopping the game because I want you to understand this or that. And, and I do that a lot of times when, when a good character is about to do something very bad. And I'll, I'll like time out. You can do it because I'm one of those game masters. It's your character, man. If you want to, you know, burn the town down, <laughs> it's your prerogative, you know. Huh, you heathen dog. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to kill this guy who's been tormenting you, this villain who's been tormenting you and maybe killed you know, another character you loved, that's fine. However, that's not your alignment. Mm -hmm. And sure. as much as in the heat of the moment you want to do this, you need to stop and think. And if you do that, for me, and it's not in the rule books, but for me, the consequences of your action is you're now going to be aberrant or miscreant or probably not diabolic is too much of a jump, but you know, and do you want to do that? And a lot of times all the character or the player needs is that moment to reflect on it and go, Oh, you know what? I would love to kill that SOB, but it's wrong. And so we're going to hand them over to the authorities and that, that makes for, for a, a much better, story oh like yeah. yeah yeah you you over you overcame that that mental diversity and and uh and stayed true to your core values that's the story of you man that that is your triumph no matter what you did that or you Sliding did it into, into anarchy and 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 miscreantism and all that stuff that's somebody else's story that's mm -hmm. that that that's that's a loser story this is my story but but you can also do it and then realize if you know role playing like oh my god what did i just do yep I, i've had people do do, too, do, yeah. do both i mean i think that was the beauty of me uh running 26 guys and 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 helping found the detroit gaming center is you got to see all these different role playing moments and i got to see all these different things i've had both happen where it, it, i would say eight out of ten times the person sits back like heathen dog said and goes, nope, that's not me. You know, I, I'm, I'm glad I was able to take that moment and, you know, I'm going to do what's right. And I've had other people, I don't give a shit. I'm killing this mother. And they kill them. And then, you know, their alignment drops and they're like, oh, man, I, sh I wish I hadn't done that. And how do I get back up to being scrupulous? And it's like, it doesn't happen with one good deed, man. You know, it's going to be... Hey, one good deed doesn't cancel out murder? Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so... No. I, I agree. That, you know, align, maybe alignments are something we should we should take on in a future discussion because uh, people have been saying it comments as well, but I don't like alignments. I, I generally think that alignments are... are dumb in games because of how they're implemented my caveat to that is the palladium alignments 
are perfect. I mean, I, I can't say it any other way. They are the best. If I'm going to use an alignment system, I'm going to use the Palladium system, and I still use it as a guideline anyway because they're so spot on in how they should be utilized, and they help characters. Instead of just say, what, what does lawful good mean? What well, means this? Well, to me, it means that. Well, then you get players arguing, that's not a lawful good act. Well, it is to that. You know, No, it says... If the character yeah, or, may do this, will not do that, yeah, blah, 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 yeah, you know, the, down the line. Those are the yeah. between 7 and 13 example edicts that that someone of this alignment will or will not do. And then uh, if, if you come up in a situation that doesn't exactly match one of these examples, look to these examples for your guide. Yep. Look, look to this as your signpost. And uh, I, I, I would say, hey, uh, Game Master. Uh, this isn't exactly in my alignment, but I, I think doing this would stay with my alignment. Do you agree? Yes or no? Yes, no, whatever. Then move on. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 come on. It's a role playing game. It's about character and story. Yeah. How do you know what your, how your character is going to react to anything if you don't know what his moral code is? You have to know their moral code. You have to know. I mean, come on, we've all known people, I and mean, we know ourselves. There are there are certain lines we won't cross. There are certain mm -hmm. things that we believe in that we're going to fiercely try to live up to. And then there are other things and other people who are like, yeah, I can bend that a little, or I'm going to break that completely, or I don't give a shit. And those are all reflected in the alignments, these moral and, codes. And some, sometimes, break, yeah, sometimes breaking alignment is a good story. Yes, in itself, it is a good story. For example, uh, your your character has come home from a long journey. You have a wife, you have two kids, and 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 so and you got a Hercules moment. Your wife and and kids were murdered while you were gone, and the person who did it is sitting in your chair, in your favorite chair, covered in the blood of your children, laughing at you, but saying, "I give up." And and you you are scrupulous. What do you do? Crime of passion. Well, yeah, uh, I'm I I murder him. I rip his head off. But you wouldn't do that. Well, I'm not scrupulous anymore. Suck it, chump. <laughs> this guy's dead. He is so dead. I'm gonna kill his dead body. He's gonna be double dead. <laughs> and that in itself is a story because now you have to go to trial for the murder of a guy who is giving up. But then the the you have a whole jury selection thing, a 12, 12 angry men situation where, yeah, he did break the law, but dude, I'd have done it too. You know, like so that, that's, why, that's why I said crime of passion because the, the, the journey. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and again, we're talking about consequences, and mm -hmm. that consequences make for good stories. All right. Well, let's um Let's read some super chats. I've got a couple of final notes here. We'll, we'll uh, got some things about plating. We need to me uh, message as well. And then Kevin and Sean owe us a story and we'll get to that right at the end. They owe us. That's I'm saying that that's my word. They owe us. I'm okay. demanding. Okay. Well, but let's get through this. What's it? <laughs> let's uh, let's get through some of uh, the star chat and, and super chats first. By the way, if I missed any super chat, I feel like there are a couple of super chats that aren't in the list that we missed. If that happened, blame StreamYard, not us, because I, I double checked and I read everything that I see here. But I could have sworn a couple other super chats uh, came in. So uh, let's see, we already read those, read those. OK, I think that's the first one. Nope, oh, that's for. Oh my god, I can't find the first one here. Thanks for all the super chats, by the way, folks. Uh, here we go. Keep waving that book, Sean. I just bought the physical copies and PDFs. This came in the last video, but uh, I apparently did forget to read this one. Uh, keep waving that book, Sean. I just bought the physical copies and the PDFs of the Field Manual Empires of Humanity during the stream. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Thanks. Nice. Uh... I read this one. Love your games. Any chance we'll see an expanded treatment for MindWorks? Any I think we read this you one. You already read uh, that one. Yeah. yeah. No, I already read that one. Okay. So I apparently missed Law Dog. So I lied. I did miss somebody's. All right. Anyway, moving on here, friends. 42,000. How does Kevin and Sean handle DBs in the burbs versus apparent kill on site standing orders of the coalition military? These seem contradictory since the burbs seem to have a lot of DBs. Hmm. Well, I, again, it depends on what part of the burbs and who's around, how closely patrolled they are by the coalition. Yeah, there's different whether the coalition areas of the burbs, right, that are right around the Chai Town or more, right? You know, more more in the shanty town parts. It, it, it's, it, everything's faster and looser. 
Um, you know, if, if the coalition officer or, or patrolman is uh, corrupt, maybe he turns a blind eye for a nice little payoff or a favor or whatever. Um, you know, and otherwise, DBs better cover their ass and be careful. Because... Well, and, and I think it depends, too. I mean, like, one of the things we have in Savage Rifts is, is there's, like, some DBs that are more or less human, uh, humanoid-looking, right? So um, a, a coalition soldier with a soft spot or a side stalker with a yep. pack of dogs or something that runs into an elf or a family of, el like, elven with elven children or something, they might do something different with them than they might do with a more grotesque or, 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 yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, or monstrous looking DB. Yeah. Um, and they might, and, 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 and other ones might just shoot on sight, right? You never know. Um, the other thing is, is some DBs might be hiding their identity with like, if, if it's a dwarf or an elf, they might be able to hide that. Right. Or Especially if they're wearing a face plate. Right. It's obviously a, a hood. hood. Right. I was going to, yep. yep. So, yeah. So, I mean, it really, some of that just depends on the exact kind of DB, but, um, and, and it depends on who they're running into. As Kevin said, that was the first thing I was going to say, too. Yep. Um, so, uh, but as your game, as a game master, that's kind of your, that's your territory, too. Yeah. To yeah, what, 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 you see it, you see I conflict do. there. That's where you can have a great story. <laughs> conflict is story, right? Yeah. So, yeah. What what, you, what, yeah. what what I do is uh, for for the whole burbs thing, uh, is is a uh, why why are there DBs there and why are they there for so long if it if it you know DBs are not allowed? Well, two things: one, uh, institutional inefficiency, and two, uh, allocation of finite resources. You can't have you know roving cs you know murder squads just perpetually making a loop around the city murdering dbs every day there's not enough people in <laughs> there's not enough people in the military to do just that make all more the time. yeah you know but but skelebots are great for war they are not as good in in a uh, in in a in a population Acting as cops rather than soldiers. They they are not reliable enough. They could accidentally kill a bunch of humans. Oh, and, and, and they are well, not you me the, the coalition is not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think that was the first story that was mentioned on this. No, no, no. The coalition wants to kill the story. You, the you want you want yeah. the worst, the absolute yeah. worst uh, coalition disaster in their minds is a skelebot in a in a in a populated area killing a normal human yeah, child yeah. that 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 goes up that gets out that's a black eye for the entire place they it, do it, not want that to happen that's why it's dog packs generally yeah are yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're more dog trustworthy dog. for for nuanced decision making well the other thing is, and is they can sniff them out that's the other thing i was yeah. gonna say is if the if the db isn't a magic user or a psychic they're much likely, much more likely to be able to keep a low profile because they're not going to just be instant sniffing bait. Yeah, for, yeah. because for dog boys, boys are a finite resource. I saw for a dog boy. Right? Also, I, I want to say, while you may see DBs in those pictures, in my mind, they're not necessarily living there. They come in and like anything else, they, they're there to resupply and get information or to buy contraband or sell contraband. Yeah. And then they're out. And that snapshot of a drawing is when they're is the interesting thing that happened, right? It doesn't mean yeah. that they're the yeah. story, right? God, I yeah, hope right. people watch this video. I mean, because all those little anecdotes like that, that I think provide clarity for people that may take some things too literally. That Yes, please. <laughs> watch the video, folks. Because uh, that's good to know. Because yeah, I mean, I know me. I can be jaded by stuff like that. Like, well, it's right here in the artwork. Like, that isn't that's isn't the artwork supposed to represent a common everyday average day? Well, that's like saying that that novel that was written is supposed to be a common everyday average day. No, they write the novels about the interesting stuff. Right. Uh, do, 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 where are we next? Uh, I think we're how does Kev? Yep. Uh, so and thanks to uh, France for the ten dollars super chat. Uh, please, 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 Kev would love an SDC world book or world source book. What does that mean? What? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, understand. I don't understand that one either. I well, the way I took it was have a source book of all the SDC things out there. I, like apparently, because. Oh, sure. The conversion book has has rules for doing yeah yeah the, yeah I mean the, the the conversion book works in reverse too I mean if you want right. if you want to do it that way 
Oh, it has, it has explicit, this is how you do it if you like doing everything. But again, again I yeah. think this is beyond just characters. Right. I think this is like just kind of describe like one of those villages and so forth. That's my. That's the way I took it anyway. No, I could be wrong. I, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't say it needs a specialized book. You know, yeah. like it, that, that is in other books, just, you know, maybe not condensed and codified the way that, that Zach wants it, but it's there already. You just got to maybe look a little differently at the at the books you already have and you'll get your answers well, i mean if you want to go the other way around it, without like really crazy conversions but i mean again the conversion book is there with listed ars for different type of stuff i would say multi, you know so you can do mdc to sdc can be times 100 times 10 we talked about this time well if you want to do the other way just everything anything that's MDC does times 10 sdc damage and now everything's sdc <laughs> right i mean that's well and, and, and you know what sdc items are you know you know what a stapler is going to do if I throw this at his head. But I think I think there's yeah. No, think, no, 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 no. I, I, I sure go. go ahead and try. Can you show me? Yeah, please. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, Kev. No, don't do it. Do you John, want to I, books or not? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. that's a tough that's one. Uh... <laughs> I'm glad at least you paused. <laughs> Uh, I often find my experiences in Rift consist of a lot of waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> you have a good game master, sir. Yep. And I, I had to start this one. This is a fantastic show. Well, I mean, Kevin and Sean do class up the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're bums over here. Uh, all, all the classes on that side. Yeah. No, notice I don't get to read a book all day. Uh. Oh, super sticker. Another Thank super you for the $10 activity. super sticker. Appreciate that. Per new classes that come out shouldn't be uh, out to beat the old. Class diversity matters to me. Points of view, different walks of life. Not not just Leyline Walker 3.0 or whatever. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what else to say, but I, I agree. Well, I, what I would like is for the people who are just so adamant about this class is worthless, this class is overpowered. I really like the people to come out and show how and why. Well, like they that. can't be because it, it usually ends up being a GM issue. The, yeah. the, the the game master isn't portraying the world in a way that that the OCCs at his table have a chance to shine. That's Again. usually the problem. Player yeah. and GM sit down together, read through it, yeah. maybe for the whole group, right? And and that can help a lot. Yeah, with this next one, we're actually going to have another Palladium announcement here. So, uh, yes, the Christmas surprise packages are just the best. I love them. Anything you guys want to say about the upcoming twenty twenty? What year are we in for Christmas packages? What year are we in? Yeah, we we've decided to stop doing Christmas surprise. Packages. Yeah, it's it's a piece you of heard it here first, folks. It's so much work. <laughs> um, glad you've enjoyed. No, tired of signing books. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, you know what? Ran out of books. Sorry. <laughs> so the Christmas surprise packages are, are awesome um, because they really are a surprise. So, so we have you guys um, send us a list of, we have a little form that you fill out. Um, and part of it is your wish list of existing available books, not stuff that's coming out. God knows when not stuff, you know, is coming out next year, like TMNT. Don't ask for TMNT, because guess what? You're not going to get them because they're not available. <laughs> you send us a list of 12 to 15 books per surprise oh, wow. package. Yeah. And then I go through and I pick out a hundred or more dollars worth of stuff. You pay 60 bucks plus shipping, which if it's media mail, if it's all books, it's typically around 10, 12 bucks. And then if you want the book signed, we'll all sign them. Uh, other questions are things like uh, what what books you might want to try, um, whether you want a T-shirt, yes or no, whether you want autographs, yes or no. And then available staff, myself and all available staff will sign those books. Uh, you can ask for prints. You can ask for poker decks. You can ask for whatever we have. Um, and then we pack it up. Sign it up, pack it up, send it out to you. And because it's going to be like four or five or six of those items, depending on the retail price. Availability and, and you know. Whatever. You don't know what you're getting. And if you say, oh, I love stuff like this, and we have something sitting around we think that you would like, uh, we might toss that in. That They're really great. And worse, 
it's like a 50, 60% discount or 60, uh, a 40, 50% discount. Um, but it's fun and it's a prize because when you get that box, just like a Christmas package, you don't know what's in there. You don't know what I might have put in there extra. You don't know which of those 12 or 15 books you're getting. It's just a ton of fun. It's a great way to try uh, new game systems or, or new game settings. Um, you never played Rifts, ask for a core rule book and a couple source books or, or a world book or two. Um, it's just a lot of fun. We enjoy doing it because it brings so much people uh, joy, uh, especially for the holidays. You're saving money. It's also a great way to buy gifts for, for your game group or for the gamer in your life. Um, you know, if you're you always get extra table copies of core books, yep. a lot of people, a lot of guys do that. Um, yeah, replace your battered up book, stuff that's been lost. It's also a great way to uh, build your collection. Um, and get autographs at the same time if you're into that. For a lot of people, you know, we don't do a lot of conventions, so for a lot of people, it's hard. Right, it's the only way to get your signature. Yes. Yep, there it is. Uh, on, on, unless they stalk your house and do weird stuff, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> you know, and, and 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 the extra stuff in there isn't a joke. You know, everything from uh, t-shirts to to pens to pads and so forth. I'm sure. I think I got a white powder one time. Toenail clippings. It was great. You know, a whole bunch of stuff that I. <laughs> there you go. Only for you, Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Wait, you mean I have Kevin's DNA? I'm going to get all. Oh, it's not Kevin. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I, no. Went to, I went to clone, and it was not the same. It was, that is not Kevin. That is not abort, abort, flush. Get out of here. Uh, all right, but, you know, folks. I, I, when do you think you're going to open up the Christmas package or start the Christmas package sale for this year? So I actually did a special blurb with the Glitter Boys that says October 24th. But I think we may do it as soon as uh, next weekend. Awesome. Good boys were wrong. Screw their podcast. I'm kidding. Go yeah. check them out. Kevin was wrong. <laughs> Kevin was B tier podcast. B tier. No. <laughs> I was originally planning like the 24th, and then uh, well, we moved up the sale for the 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 horror sale. Yep. Because one of the things we we're having was we we're having uh, I mean, it's not the normal response to the horror sale the past couple of years, and we realized we need to put it earlier so that people can get the stuff in time to run things around Halloween. Oh, yeah. hey. Uh, Duh! <laughs> right, Kevin figured that out, and and so, but because of that, the horror sale is not later. Therefore, we have an opening that we can then do the Christmas surprise package. And so many people That's have been cool. asking about it already. Yeah, we've had a lot of people asking. So, so I, I think you know times are kind of tough. And oh yes, for for deals and and we're happy to oblige. You know that's why we do it because uh, it's our way of saying thank you to to our players. Uh, to all the gamers out there who have supported us, whether you're brand new or whether you are been with us, uh, like Reagan White, that's one of our actual freelancers. That's actually Glenn Evans. And uh, Wait, he, I'd be nice uh, to him now? Dang it. You don't have to. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> I'm nice to Glenn. I've been I like crapping on him for months, and now you tell God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, sorry, Glenn, I outed you. Uh, but, you know, Glenn's been a fan and then became a freelancer. He's been a fan of ours for probably 30 years. Um, so, but, you know, whether you're new or old, we always have something we can put in there uh, for you. And, and you have all types of genres. We, you know, we're focusing on riffs, but, I mean, you got Nightbane. You've got, uh, oh, my God, I think Ninjas Beyond and Super Spice Heroes Unlimited. Limited. People today all blurting out splicers. After, I mean, um, after... My, my jam, yep. You, <laughs> you know, yeah. so I mean, after the bomb is great too because if you, especially if you're anticipating and, and excited about MNT, mm -hmm. you know, this, greatness, this is a way to get sort of a jump on it because it uses the same basic system to generate the mutants and stuff, and you can start creating villains or plotting your games, and mm -hmm. uh, plus they're just not, again they're just nice resources to have. If there's a Sorry, genre you want to play, it's, it's it's there. No, no, that that's just, let's get people excited. I mean, there are people on our Discord who type all year long, like, I cannot wait till the Christmas packages come out because I'm going to get this one, I'm going to get this one, or I'm going to request this and this and this. I hope I get this. And they, oh, and now I'm going to add this one to the list because they'll have conversations back and forth. So there are people who literally just wait for this. Well, and the other thing I'll throw out there, if everything, if every Palladium book is a Rift source book with trans-dimensional TMNT, Every play yeah, now a TMNT source book, right? Because yeah, you can go to other dimensions. 
So yeah, you yeah, could have fun with breaking it up with some adventures in Dead Rain right. or Supernatural mm-hmm. or Palladium right. Fantasy, it, which is so year, girls, but yeah. This year I am I am trying to stick to to the promise I tried to last year, but I failed. That I am not. I'm I'm gonna order the the uh, the, the Christmas package. I'm gonna wrap it. I'm gonna put it under the tree. I am not gonna open it until <laughs> Christmas morning. Sure. I have failed like two years in a row to do that. I was I just look at the box and I go, oh, I want it, and I just <laughs> open it. But to, this year I I'm I'm doubling down. I swear. I'm no, don't wait. do that because he's gonna put a live oh, animal in there and it's gonna die. That, well, it, then, then, then I'm gonna have a, a taxidermy nightmare on my hands. I guess <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but see, that's why you have to buy at least two, oh, so that when, when it shows up, one you go, yes, I'm opening it now. Oh, I got this piece of crap. What the- <laughs> oh, 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 that was, oh. <laughs> that you'll never get that kind of that. No, we don't. We don't. And we, don't, we just saw the boat. business partnership fade <laughs> away. <laughs> The definition of in twain. <laughs> no, all right, we let's move each other all the time. <laughs> let's move on to the next uh, comment here. Uh, question from a current Rifts game master: Any plans for upcoming random equipment, monsters, OCCs, treasures, and upcoming books? Like all of them? Like all of them? Like that? That's every book, man. That's every new book. A ton of stuff like that in Palladium's books. I mean, China Robotics is full of. of oh yeah. Like that so. Um, I mean, if you're talking about specifically um, random encounters, I mean, the, was it the 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 the, the primer? Yeah, the, and 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 then the adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Rift's primer and adventures. That's that's a great book. Yeah. So, um, and that's pretty new. Yeah. I mean, it's, a couple of years. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got. I mean, it's got like stuff that. Yeah. It's pretty and, and of course, oh my gosh, when uh, and again, I hate to talk about stuff that isn't going to be readily available, but. Don't worry, we'll watch Sean choke you. Well, everyone knows that it's one of the next books I got to do is uh, a finish is uh, Rifts Antarctica. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rifts yeah. Antarctica is going to blow people's freaking minds. Uh, so, yeah, that that's definitely one you need to put on your list, not for Christmas, but not for next year. Christmas. That's believe it or not, that one's on my list. I've talked with Eden Dog about this, and yeah. my interest is the fact that you know they, they've been talking quietly but they've been talking for years about the tunnels and crevices that are in antarctica and i really want to see how you handle that because because you've already mentioned that that they're there i mean in a in a, in a past stream and i just want to see how you handle it, especially now that new science and not new but you know science has been coming up talking about it more and more it's like oh i wonder if they actually line up and i don't know that didn't interest me so i will be getting another riffs book to use in my team and t games um Right. Um, yeah. Also, if I can just talk a minute again, that's one of the things I think like the Rifts uh, Game Master's Guide for the Savage Rift stuff is good for. It has tables of like contacts and how reliable they are. It has adventure tables, tables for wh- different kinds of rifts and storms and where they go. A lot of it is condensed from the Palladium books, right? Um, and then collected here. So it's one of those things if you're looking for something to just generate, um, like what trouble's going on or um, scenario. things that yeah. thicken the plot or uh, the, 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 the motivation of a, of a group. Um, again, uh, with Empire's Humanity and all the rest of the books, depending on the region, you've got tables for encounters and they, they, they're not all combat encounters. Some of them might be you run across, you know, pioneers in the new West that need help or, or something like that. So again, those books have a lot of stuff like that. Um, especially the savage foes, North America and, uh, the game master's handbook and then the different world books. Um, it's just one of those things that, you know, these books are meant to be companions in a lot of ways, uh, mm-hmm. thematically to the palladium yeah, books they are yeah. not meant to replace them, but it has a lot of things like that condensed in easy to use formats. So, and it's a lot of it's system agnostic when it says 2d6 of this or that, we'll just go grab the palladium rules for those characters. And, right? and since we're mentioning a lot of the savage worlds riffs products, I want to say my, one of my personal favorites is, uh, Atlantis and a demon sea. I love that source book. So um, it's if you want stuff to vary it up, I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of the things that we leaned into because it's such a great Palladium thing. And there's a lot of things like that in the various Palladium books as well. But we're a little more like systematic and overt with it in a lot of the Savage Rifts material. So um, you have something in the, in the Savage Rules, since you do have, you're more mechanically oriented in that, uh, that would equate to say old D&D reaction rules. I, I know that that, 
make some people angry. Don't do it. But I actually think the reaction rules can be helpful. I don't know how this NPC is going to react. Because you mentioned before, even just randomly. Oh, there's, a, there's a reaction. Yeah, Savage Worlds actually has a reaction table. In, okay. Uh, so you can use that. Um, the, there are tables like that in the um, Game Master Handbook where you can, like, let me, I can like, find these specific tables. Like, it's all even just good. Like one I wrote that I did a lot of work on was um, for generating all kinds of crazy different rifts, towns, and settlements. So there's a settlement generator, which has a whole table mm. of, and you've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I showed it to Kevin because I was really proud of it, but you roll for the, you actually roll one of each type of die, D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, um, and then pull a card out of a, out of a deck of card, of poker cards, and it tells you what type of settlement is, what their tech level is, who primarily lives there, the denizens, their economy, and what it's based on. The yeah, we got a rifter for that. Heathen Dog already covered Yeah, it. actually, I think it's rifter <laughs> seven or eight. No, it's like one I or two. It was that, really early. Generator as yeah. well. Yeah. And I, and I, don't, I don't know how good that rifter article is or not, but, you know, personally, but I, you know, um, and then there's different things like emergency relief that you might need to do, other trouble that comes up, That's various cool. encounters. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, if you're looking for just tables and tables, those books can be a good resource, too. Yeah, um, I, I hear a lot of game masters like, oh, you know, the NPCs are boring or, oh, look, if you have a background for an NPC that's supposed to act a certain way, zero issues. But if you're unsure, instead of making them cookie cutter every time, I think that reaction tables work in that regard. Like, I don't know if these people like you or not. Let's find I, out. One of the things that I do is I'll roll. And if I don't like the result, it doesn't fit the current story. I roll again. <laughs> you know, and, just, and then you you riff off of it or like this part of the <laughs> thing on the table and I'll just go with that. Right. I mean, that's nice. a great way to do it, too. Um, so, OK, uh, we got a super sticker from your buddy. Thank hey. you. Thank you. I don't know why I could be wrong, but I feel like I snapped at him one time in the past in comments. That name is somewhat familiar to me, but I might I, I might be wrong about that. If I did, I'm sorry. And you just paid me 10 bucks. You have warmed my heart. <laughs> <laughs> His his cold Grinchy heart grew grew, grew three sizes for ten dollars this so year. Still what does that say about him? I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael, man, SD, SDC. Oh, thank you for five dollars. SDC cyborgs <laughs> need a book in riffs. Really? Uh, they got to no, be a ton of budget borgs working in mines, factories, and smoking. Yeah, you have Heroes Unlimited and Ninjas and Super Spies, and uh, the, the there, there's even something for mining Borgs somewhere. I forget where you it was. Yeah, you want to see robots, Borgs, and vehicles? Just go Heroes Unlimited. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I just put the name Budget Borg. That's me. <laughs> Budget Borg. I want Borg. <laughs> or, or used used creation rules for for robots in uh, Sourcebook One, and instead of MDC, make it SDC. Yeah. It's yeah, in, 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 instead of plastic seal, they're made out of, you know, bronze, whatever. I don't I'm know. trying to sell more books, Kev. What are you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Buy Heroes Unlimited, damn it. <laughs> I'm going to drop that one. And uh, by the way, I'm not dropping actual super chats. Uh, I'm going to drop that one because I don't think they're relevant anymore. Okay, so Law Dog for $10 says, when someone violates his alignment severely, I have him roll a save versus insanity due to the stress. That's a cool idea. Much yeah, like maybe they start washing their hands a lot because they murdered somebody, right? Yeah, much like a soldier returning from war with PTSD because of things they are forced to do. What I find I good had, about I had this, to stack the Viet Cong like cordwood. You don't come back from that regular, you know. You don't, right. you, don't, you don't come back from that normal. When you I, come I like it when games put in stuff like this because it's some. It was even though it's a game, more of a game master oriented thing. It reminds players that it's not that easy. Free League does it. You have to make a willpower roll in order to kill somebody and, and and so i was i was going to save this you know for possibly a future but i'll bring it up now a pet peeve of mine in games is when char player characters rationalize well we got to kill him otherwise he's going to tell the enemy constantly got to kill him because you're going to tell got to kill you in real life unless you're a psychopath it's not easy to kill somebody not that i've tried <laughs> but but it's not something that everybody can just do you might talk a tough game but it's not it's not something that's just common and and you, every every adventure you play it doesn't matter if it's riffs or D D or cyberpunk or whatever like we got to kill him he's going to come back and get us if we don't well, kill him I mean, always if you, if you actually follow the alignments as written it'll solve a lot of those problems mm -hmm. yeah show them which well no no it, it won't right. solve the problem <laughs> but it it'll, it'll it'll give you the thing you can do in that situation 
without well, without would, you know, if, they're, if they're saying well, I'm an, I'm a hero, but then now you're you're miscreant or diabolical you're, because of your actions. It's exactly right. Yeah, you, you wouldn't do that. But the, yeah, the, the the problem of the guy who's going to tell the enemy still remains. What else are you going to do besides kill him? Because your alignment says you can't kill him, so you got to think of something else. I mean, right. that, that's that's where psychics come in, you know, with the whole hypnotic suggestion. With you, you cannot physically talk about us or what we're I doing, or, 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 or a mind wipe. You, you just don't remember today. You know, <laughs> there you go. Right there, it is. Now, now, <laughs> is that does that bring up right other moral right. implications? <laughs> yes. And maybe your alignment wouldn't allow you to mind wipe either. Well, why do you why do you even have the power at that point? You know why why'd you choose it if you can't use it? Right? Eh, that's another problem for another day. But yeah, there are other solutions oh, besides yeah, killing take him out of the wilderness. Right, the savage wilderness. Yeah, take him out in the wilderness, and uh, he had an accident. You're oh. probably already in the wilderness, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Full circle back to the first one. Uh, best comment of the day i don't care about super chats anymore this is the best comment of the day okay. i'm kidding uh this is actually the best interview i've seen with kevin and sean legion myth asking the right questions a lot of good advice this is the important part for me a lot of good advice for game mastering great chemistry well the reason there's just great chemistry is because these guys are gamers yeah I mean, they're not coming on here mm, look at me i sell a product and i do no so we talk to each other like gamers uh I can't say it any other way. That's just what it is. You know, whether we agree or disagree, we talk like gamers. That's where the chemistry is coming from. It's also why I was very adamant. Well, we've done a little bit of it about not promoting books. We're not here to ask about when the next, you know, riffs, whatever is coming out or next beyond the super, because we're here to talk like gamers. And this That's is why we're here either. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I hope, I hope you guys are having a good, oops, get off the screen. <laughs> my god spazzing out here but i hope you guys are having a good time because uh the, yeah this has been a an incredibly fun conversation i love talking the gaming and and picking the brains not just of well he wrote the game so he's going to know how you should run it but just the ideas that are put out there from the experience that they've got from running games any games for decades like it or love it or hate it it's still food for thought it's still stuff you know well, that's one of the things we, 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 you know, to kind of close up the discussion is we, we, you know, we run games a certain way and Kevin and I are actually really compatible in that. We're very similar. Um, and, but the weird thing is, you know, is how do we communicate that to the player? And that's yep. one of the things we're always trying to do better. Um, yep. Not just communicating the rules, but how do you play the game, right? So people ask about, will you ever do a hex crawl? Well, you know, we've, we've talked about stuff like that before. We've, we've considered it and we might do it in the future. But, you know, it's good to hear what people want. But part of that's just because that's how we can provide, it. What, what's the best way we can provide affordance, whether it's tables or, or maps or something like that. Um, it, you know, is it, it, it can provide affordance for game masters to be able to run riffs the way that we hope that people are enjoying it, right? And the things that are core to the storytelling for us. So um, it's not like there's a right or wrong answer for a lot of this stuff, but it's just how do we share it efficiently and effectively? By the way, one, one of the things that you both say a lot, and, and Kevin's really adamant about this, that I think is funny because there are lots of arguments wherever you go, our Discord, <laughs> over how to interpret a riffs rule, so to speak. And, uh, and I get spun up on these two, like, well, Max, if you just look into Beyond the Supernatural book, well, I don't have it. So I make up my own system for it. So that, you know, you know, things like that is the fact that how, how many times you say, oh, you were playing wrong, but were you having fun? Then you weren't playing it wrong. And I think that that can squelch a lot of those discord, like, no, this is how you're supposed to do it. Really? Because Kevin said, as long as you're you know, having fun, you're doing it right. Make a ruling, be consistent. And if it works, keep using it. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Don't don't uh, don't try and fix something that's not broke. All right. Two more, and then I think we're going to get a story and promote a little bit more Palladium stuff because I want to get through all the things we talked about earlier. Uh, what? By the way, thank you for the five Canadian dollars. I'll see if I can turn that in for food stamps. Uh, what? Or what is your preference? Old style gunfighting rules, Nightbane, Ninja Super Spies versus the newer rules in Ultimate Rifts. What led to the change? And by the way, if you haven't been to the show before, we make fun of everybody that's not American because you make fun of us. It's just fun. <laughs> it's like the military branch is talking about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a you question. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you question. Because <laughs> literally, he that's his book. I mean, I mean, I know, I know. But now I want to make a T-shirt with your picture on it, with a quote saying, "That's a you question." <laughs> and that'll be awesome. That'll, that'll sell. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I think the newer rules are simpler and more intuitive for people, but there are aspects of the older rules that I really like. Well, the, 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 the older rules have more flavor, but can be considered more cumbersome, I guess. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we're we're trying to find a good balance between those for like the Redux edition of of Team and T. Um, and so interested to see what people think of that because yeah. Kevin and I've been discussing a lot of top stuff like this for a while. So what he said, folks, they're still writing the book. So 2027 is when you're getting your TMT and t stuff. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> going to that's prove by, that's going to prove that whole thing. Is, that whole first book now is approved by. Kevin. <laughs> Okay. Uh, right. I just wanted to start a bad rumor. <laughs> and the last one, yeah, really Kevin is not wrong. amused. He's like, well, they're just ending my time and we're not coming back to the show again. Uh all right. Heathen Dog needs a CS flag for his background. Please make it, Kevin and Sean. Yeah, he's got the he's got the Legion Myth one. He needs yeah, a CS flag. Want to find him. He yeah, well, want it's, him. Do, do you sell a, a, a CS flag tapestry that is at least like four by four? No, no. Is, is that a tapestry behind you? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were using a green screen. No, no. This is real. This is that's real. Cool. Yeah, Legion Missiles tapestry. How come Palladium Books yeah, can't we, figure that out? The hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess we could start selling flags. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there's a market for it, we'll sell anything. There you go. <laughs> All right, let me look at my notes, make sure I said did everything. So, oh, there's one comment I missed, and this is back to just. I like this as a blanket statement. You can place it wherever you want. Limitations, and I've been getting this from a lot of people uh, who have been bringing this up as well. Limitations. I think we were talking about OCCs at this time. Breed creativity and imagination. So when you have the world given to you, you can do whatever. There tends to be a lack of imagination. When you have limitations and things you can't do and you have to start thinking outside the box to accomplish stuff, boom, the imagination starts to go. The whole necessity is the mother of invention thing yeah. is true. So yeah, I'd buy a CS flag. Yeah, 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 yeah you would, Franz. You, you fascist. You. No, you're all, you're my buddy. You're all, my all right. So, so we talked about the Christmas sale. Uh, want to remind in case people didn't watch the first video. Uh, go watch for the longer version. But Kevin is going to start posting up here on on the Palladium Books YouTube channel. A history of Kevin and Palladium Books. Uh, do you want to give a, a quick blurb about that again, or do you want to say just look at the previous video? Um, no, it, it's it's just going to be fun. It's a it's a chronological history of Palladium as I remember it. And Kevin before Palladium, right? As an artist right. and yep. an upcoming designer. And uh, I think there's a lot of good little bits in there. I mean, there's some repeat. Like if you listen to Glitter Boys, you're going to hear some similar things. But uh, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty concise. It's pretty fun. Um, you should check them out. They're going to start appearing in October, maybe even as early as next weekend. Uh, we'll be posting one like every other week. And I think you'll really enjoy it. Yeah, you you may or may not find out when Kevin stopped believing in Santa Claus. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, but Santa sorry. Claus? I still ah, know. there it is. There it is. That's the right answer. He's not real. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right and people answer. should check out the Glitter Boys interviews with Kevin and the history there. I, I strongly support those those videos. And somebody typed it. Somebody correct or. Let me know. It's Breakfast Puppies is the name of the uh, of their YouTube channel, but the show is called Glitter Boys. I never remember the channel name. I always remember just the show name, but check them out. Uh, let's see, don't forget to pre-order your turtles. If you haven't yet, you can still pre-order turtles and to update your backer kit survey. They call it a survey. That's backer kit that calls it a survey, not Palladium Books. That's it, it is what it is, but fill out the survey so you can get your stuff. Yeah, it's, a, it's really like a registration of all your important details so we can actually ship your stuff to you. Yeah, and, like and your, contact your, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and one of the problems that we have is that it's people who have um, like Apple emails, or there's a way to obfuscate your email through uh, Kickstarter. So that's one of the problems is these things, when we try and send you messages, they're just going, there's just, you're, it's not, you're not going the garbage. Oh, yeah. It's going into the garbage, right? It's, it's being blacklisted. And um, so that we really want to make sure that doesn't happen and you can get your stuff. So please uh, check out if you, and if you have any questions, you know, you can check our weekly update. Um, we've got, uh, you can, 
Um, also call our office if you need help finding the place to do it, or if you just want to give us your information that way, yeah. um, we'd be happy, we're happy to help you out any way we can. But unfortunately we've done, we've exhausted all the possibilities of us contacting you over 20 times through three different methods, uh, including direct messaging and, uh, and other emails. So, um, that's, that's what we need help with is get the word out. If you know somebody that's, that's backed it, make, please make sure they register, um, with their backer kit survey and there's a way to, to get to it and retrieve it if you very easily uh you just have to have the right link if you uh if you haven't if you you know didn't get the email or didn't or miss the email or something like that so okay and the last thing i have written down before i demand the story is uh, uh don't forget that there we mentioned this with the christmas sale uh but uh they have the horror book sale right now which in the last video we scrolled through like a million books and so may as well just said the whole catalog is on sale this way it seems so a lot of books on sale for you to check out for your horror needs for this halloween and cool. and if you if you get it quickly you could have these books by halloween and yeah. be able to run them yeah. for for your uh for your table so you know don't wait. Get in now. Uh, the link is in the description, folks. Uh, so this is the story I'm demanding. Apparently, you guys had an awesome adventure, a good time in Yinsloth Expeditions. Do tell. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, um, Caleb and I uh, play tested. Um, and my daughter, we play tested uh, the initial one of the starting adventures that Kevin has completely revamped for Yinsloth Expeditions. It's not revamped; it's brand new. Oh, I thought it was okay. Great. No, cool. it's it's brand oh, new. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, um, it's introduction inspired to by something yeah. John Klinkle wrote, and uh, I kind of took it in a different direction, and it was uh, it was a blast. And one, so one of the cool things for me, and again, this is why I love role playing, is. They, had, of course, had no idea what the adventure is about. And sure. they just rolled up characters that they thought would be fun. Sure. And they were all first Not level. combat powerhouses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, one, one was a stinking druid. One's, uh, one's a, a thief. Uh, thief. And then Sean's character was a puny manhunter. A man catcher. Man, yeah, man catcher. Man not catcher. Not it's like, yeah. If he's puny, would be more. <laughs> like I'm a not man a man hunter. hunter. I'm too. I'm too weak for that. I'm a well, catch and was, release kind of guy. He was a man catcher, and I got all the physical skills I could. To, I think get him up to PS eleven nine. or nine or something. <laughs> guy was puny. Had no bonuses. He's a um, man hugger. Yeah, he has, the, he has poor bone density, probably as well. So yeah. <laughs> something. <laughs> and, and, and they're going up against something that that's pretty freaking tough. So, like my my initial reaction, and this is sort of you know a slaughter. A good example for for game masters is, <clears throat> I see these characters and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to go well. <laughs> I, I I don't know how they're going to do anything here, but conventional wisdom says they're going to be put through a grinder and come out chump. You know, like yes. <laughs> Very much so. So right off the bat, they, they just started playing really, uh, really smart and, and played as a team. So first of all, it's only three of them going up against, you know, something really There's quite a few enemies dangerous. Tough, yeah. And uh, they just played smart from word go. Um, they played strategically. I had my uh, net ready for the when the big bad guy ran around a corner. And I was bowling guys. <laughs> Bolos are great. Smoke bomb. The thief stuck okay. in when he was noticed. Smoke bomb. Bolo. <laughs> you know, one of my one of my favorite moments was um, Sean's daughter says, because uh, there's a bunch of children who are held captive. Sure. And she just says, so my character heard what I think are like children crying and some voices i'm like yeah she goes i'm gonna go scout ahead and and while they're <laughs> dealing with the big baddie uh, <laughs> well, sneaking up on sneaking on up baddie. on him right <laughs> and, 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 and sean's like and, and it seemed more dad than his character are you sure you want to do that I mean, we're about to engage this guy. I said, yeah, we, uh, you know, you're leaving us uh, without saying anything as we're about to engage these this big bad guy. And she kind of looks at him and looks at me, and I'm like, you tell me? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'm sneaking ahead, which turned out to be the smart it was, thing to do. It was to great. Do. It was actually great. It, 
it was just beautiful. He rolls a natural 20 when he needed to roll a natural 20. Uh, the, whole it was the, the whole table cheers. Uh, it was just it was just great. I can't, I can't go into a ton of details because I don't want to ruin, ruin the adventure. Oh, yeah. no, that's fair. Yeah. I thought we were dead. Like, to be honest, when we came in there and I when I rolled my character's stats, I was like, oh, no. Like, we're really <laughs> dead now. Like, <laughs> oh, it was funny. And then I come in and, I, and Caleb's like, oh, I made a thief. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then his daughter's like, oh, I I got a dwarven druid. Yeah, I made and this like, dwarf. What? She has like a pile of like 16 such things as dwarven druids? I mean, and, and it's like, and then, like I said, they, they actually made a lot of smart moves even before some strategic stuff, even before the encounter begins. Yeah, the major combat. And they didn't even have to use – I'm thinking, oh, thank God they got this. Thank goodness they did. They thought of that. They didn't even have to do it because they just played so tight and so smart, and uh, it was just a blast. And, and not only did they not die, they could, like, at the end of the adventure, they went from first level to second level because – they played like as flawlessly as you could you could do and got the best results you could hope for. It was a good thing because there was, I mean, without spoiling the adventure too much, I mean, there was like, oh, this person's no longer, you know, ensorcelled by this guy. So it's a good thing I followed him <laughs> instead of like and stabbing him. Got him, him like death, a right? fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, but the, the, the only question I have about this is I, uh, during this thing, the only thing I know is that there were a bunch of children that, that were captive and, and your, and your daughter went to, went to save them. I mm -hmm. imagine she was successful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. No. Okay. So, so We've was there the Rex Temple of Doom going. moment at the end when Indy, when you, you guys as Indy come over the thing and all the children crest back to the village and everyone's happy and like, was that moment there? Because if not, you did oh, it yeah. wrong. No, okay, it was good. all right. Good. Good. Well, I was a decent Fair game enough. master as people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. All right. I was Make shocked, it. honestly, because, um, I don't know of another fantasy system that I've played where where it would have the affordance for us to be able to make a lot of those choices and do a lot of those things. I mean, nets and bolos and smoke bombs, and there's a lot of other stuff that you have um, in your bag of tricks for certain characters, and uh, and even some of the spells and stuff that allowed us to um, play it really well and, and effectively. That I was just shocked at how effective it was. I played a lot of. Well, to, to put a little bow on this uh, for this episode and, the, and how we started off, would you say that theoretically those characters were underpowered? Yes. Oh, and, way. And like, yet, oh. look what happened. Right. Absolute win. Right. I mean, you you are making a case for my my most hated Heroes Unlimited OCC, the Stage Magician. <laughs> well, I'd see. This is the thing. I played the the Man Catcher just because. I'm the one that gave Kevin the idea for a lot of the updates to that character and the OCC in the updated Yen Sloth. And so I was like, well, I should probably play the thing that Kevin wrote on some of my suggestions. And um, I was, I, I was like, no matter how bad it might be, because <laughs> he was like, you don't want to play like a crusader or something, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was actually a lot of fun. And, yeah, because if they were playing like a Holy Crusader, they wouldn't have all this information. It's like, nah, we're all dumb as bricks. We're all first level. Um, you know, the Druid is the strong one in the group. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This my guy my is character a was dead not a meat. specimen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they played wonderfully, and uh, it was it was a great, great adventure. It was lots of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I think with that, we scheduled this for two hours. It's been over yeah. four. Perfect timing yeah. for Legion of Myth. That's how we do things here. It's been, I, I, I can, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair. that's fair. I thought by cutting it down to two topics, it, I'm just, you know what? It was a fun time. I maybe I'll need mean, one topic per video. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Find a way to stretch one topic to three and a half hours. I mean, you're going to make two, two videos out of one video, right? Yeah, I'm gonna make two videos out of this. Yeah, the first one is gonna be on on uh, what do you call? Uh, 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 oh my God, Overland, Overland. Thank you, wilderness. Yeah, there wilderness you go, Crown. wilderness and 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 rifts. And the other one's gonna be on the OCC slash uh, 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 SDC MDC. So uh, let me throw this up here. Uh, any any final words, Kevin and Sean, that you want to say? Obviously, we thank you for being here. Uh, sincerely, I love this gamer talk idea for the folks out there. I ha I have to I have to admit this. It's actually their idea. 
I didn't come up with this, and I feel bad about that. I'm like, yeah, why? Well, of course, I'm going to do this. No, Does my? <laughs> you no. hate asking people for things, even if you did come up with the idea. There's you wouldn't have said anything. Yeah, Minnesota passive aggressiveism. Yeah, that's exactly. kind of true. But but no, but uh, but no. Th so and I'm and I'm glad we got it to work out. I would like. I'm doing this on video, so they have to, uh, to do this once a month if their schedules can can work on this. And if you guys out there ask for more of this and give us good topics to talk about, I'd love to do this once a month if possible. Up yours. I mean, uh, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sounds Minnesota like in my nightmare life. is what you just did. <laughs> Makes sense. No, we, I think we can do that. I mean, we enjoy these kind of discussions. It's always fun. I mean, like you said, we're just goofy gamers who happen to publish games. So found the secret sauce all right well, anything you want to say to the folks out there before i put up the banner and uh, we head on out happy halloween Yay. thank you for your support and just keep gaming sweet sounds great well hey everybody please like subscribe and share let us know in the comments your thoughts on any part of the discussion uh if you have something that you want to relate that please time stamp it <laughs> it's weird like i don't know what he's answering to but uh check that out next week legion of myth is going to be starting a new segment on absolute power by discami games probably should have done this last year but eh, we finally got to it uh and uh, heathen dog is going to be covering rifter nine and a half as we go through the rifters in order i look forward to what kind of nonsense we can find in those uh subject matter so with that said, I want to wish everybody a wonderful weekend. Thank you for all the super chats. I hope to see you on Friday for some Rando RPG live stream or next Sunday for uh, the next, uh, what was the show? RPG Digest. I'm sure wow. I do something here. Oh, oh, let's do the thank you one. There we go. Nope, that's the members only. Where's the right thing? There we go. That's the one I want to put a pro streamer here. And I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful week. How do I sign out with this new outro? <laughs>